Good evening, everyone. My name is Kiro O'Shea. I'm delighted to welcome you all to our Membership Voice webinar on LinkedIn and ways we can use it to our advantage. Tonight's webinar will be on LinkedIn, of course, and will be presented by Kate McKenzie from the Rotary Year Club of Western Australia. But now it's my very great pleasure to introduce our panellist, Kate McKenzie. Kate is a professional fundraiser in the tertiary sector and a board member of the Rotarians on Social Networks Fellowship. So without any further ado, I'll hand over to Kate. Hey. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm really pleased to be talking about LinkedIn today because I think it's a social network that not enough people are using to uh, promote Rotary and to, you know, help more people discover what Rotary is about. I think it's something with a lot of potential. Uh, and the reason is that people on LinkedIn share a lot of information about themselves that they don't necessarily do on other social networks like Facebook and Twitter, um, particularly about their professional interests. And that include interest in not-for-profit roles and volunteer activity. So when people sign up for LinkedIn, they actually have the option of ticking a box Say, yes, I'm interested in skilled volunteering. And that means that it's a perfect way to find people who are interested in that activity. Uh, people also put things on their uh, CV that they're proud of. And one of the things that a lot of people are proud of is the fact that they participated in a Rotary program when they were young. Um, so you can see the, the example there of a, a young lady in Perth that I've uh, connected with who um, went on Rotary Exchange and she's put that on her profile um, for people to see. Um, so it makes it uh, a really useful tool for reconnecting with Rotary Program alumni. Um, but there's also an opportunity to find local business people and professionals who might not have heard from Rotary before, um, but because they're part of a social network, might be open to new relationships if we reach out to them in the right way. Um, so we're going to go through some examples of that. Um, the other thing is to understand, you know, what makes LinkedIn different. Um, so it's, it's a professional network. Uh, so the content is quite different to what you would see on, on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, people share things mostly about work. Um, uh, every now and then you will see something that has a bit more of a personal flavour, but it's quite different to the sorts of things that people share on Facebook which is with primarily about connecting with their family and friends. Um, the audience is a little different as well. Um, Facebook tends to cross, you know, young people, older people, all sorts of demographics. Uh, a lot of people don't really discover LinkedIn until they're a little bit further in their career. So, you know, probably 25 plus is, is the bulk of the audience. Um, and uh, it's also something that I think is... Uh, really valuable to people both at the start and, and the end of their careers, um, which is not always well understood. Because uh, a lot of people think of LinkedIn as a place where you go if you're looking for work. Um, but it's not just a CV. Um, it's a place where you can establish your professional identity. Um, but it is also useful to people who are retired uh, because once when you retire, it's still a way of showing the world what you did in your life and uh, why you're a person that someone would want to connect with. Um, because as Rotarians, one of the main things that we can offer you know, younger people coming into our organisation is the opportunity to connect with a potential mentor um, or someone who might be able to uh, you know, help their professional development in some way. So that's really important. Uh, LinkedIn also is a news service. So um, people share articles uh, about, uh, you know, different things that are, are happening in the professional world. Um, so it's a really great place to discover information about things that you may be interested in. Uh, and that includes information about uh, business stuff, but also about nonprofit themes. Um, you know, there's a lot of content on LinkedIn about philanthropy, corporate volunteering, all sorts of things that, that Rotarians might be interested in. Uh, it's also important to, like any social network, consider the fact that we shouldn't use it as a megaphone. Um, social networks should always be used to discuss, to question, to think, to connect with other people in a way that uh, is not just about uh, us, but also about you know, what the other person's interests are. <clears throat> so when you get started on LinkedIn, 
Um, the first step is to build your credibility by building up a, a comprehensive profile. Um, so the first section that you see um, is obviously your name. Um, you have an opportunity to put in a headline. Um, so in my headline, you know, I have my current position. Um, I have a more general description about who I am as a professional. And I also have put in Rotarian um, because that's an important part of my professional identity. And it makes it really visible. Um, if every Rotarian who was on LinkedIn did that, I think the visibility of our organisation would really increase. Um, in your profile, um, there's several places in which you can include your connection with Rotary. So uh, if you're um, currently working, um, usually you have, you know, the employment section where you would have a list of your current uh, positions or, or, or past positions. Uh, but um, you can also add a, a volunteer section where you would put any volunteer roles that you have. Uh, if you are retired and Rotary is your main activity, uh, you can put the, um, your Rotary role, for example, if you're president of the club or secretary, um, in as, a, as an employment position because that's your main activity. Um, but for most people who are still working, um, you, would put, uh, you would create the volunteer section and put all your volunteer roles in there. And you can put as much detail um, you know, as you have space for in that section. Um, and, you know, and obviously updated over time if you change roles or change clubs. Um, the other important part about your work history that you put in is that um, when you put in the organisations um, in, in the main list, um, which we'll have a look um, in a little while about uh, at the full profile so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but it's important to actually search for the organisation that you've worked at um, because most organisations will have a profile that already exists in LinkedIn that you can link to. So that then networks up um, yourself with other people that work at the same organisation. So um, when you type it, you should be able to find you know, the existing record to, to link to. Um, it's also important to uh, detail your education. Um, uh, because that also creates a connection between you and other people that might have studied at the same institution. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously, whatever, whatever level of education you have. Um, <clears throat> so that all builds credibility because, you know, people can see who you are, they can see your uh, credentials. And when it's uh, written in a complete way, um, it, it just builds trust in the fact that you're a bona fide person who, you know, is going to offer them something. So once you've created a profile, it's important to start by connecting with people you know. Um, as your network grows, um, you can also start to publish things. Um, so uh, on LinkedIn, you have the, op the option of sharing a short update, um, which, you know, might be just a sentence or two. Um, you can upload photos and you can also write articles, which, you know, tend to be a couple of paragraphs in length. Um, so we'll show you some examples later of, uh, some of the articles that I've written that you might like to see. Once you've built up a network of people you know, you can start to reach out to people that you haven't met before. But it's very important to do that in the right way. Um, so this is an example of someone who I haven't met, um, uh, who wrote to me with the default message. I'd like to connect with you on LinkedIn. <laughs> the first thing that you think when you see a message like that is, well, why? <laughs> I've never met you. I don't know, you know, what your intentions are. Um, it, it really doesn't uh, give you an inviting message. Um, but LinkedIn does allow you to personalise the message when you send them a connection request. And it's very, very important to do that. I would also do that also with um, people that I do know. Um, because again, if, if there's someone who I've, uh, is a friend or a colleague or, you know, someone I've worked with in the past, a fellow Rotarian, um, they deserve a bit more effort on my part than to just send them a, a default request. Um, so always personalise your message if you're connecting with anyone on LinkedIn. 
uh, this is something I actually only learned recently because it was a, um, something that had frustrated me for a long time, that when I was using the mobile app for LinkedIn, I felt like it was difficult to personalise the request. And so I used to wait until I was on my desktop before I would send, send a request. But then I discovered that on the mobile app, when um, you're looking at someone's profile, um, these little three dots here open up another menu. So that then gives you the option to personalise your invite and add a little note. Um, so it's really important that if you're on the mobile app, make sure you navigate so you can see the person's full profile, press the three little dots, and then you can open up to personalise the invite. Um, so that, that's a really um, important tool. So once you've established your profile, um, uh, just to go back a second, the other important thing about your profile is to have a good photograph, um, preferably one that shows your face clearly, that you're dressed appropriate for your profession, uh, that, you know, gives the, um, you know, someone, uh, you know, smiling, uh, open, you know, that, that people can, can trust you when, when they look at your photo. Uh, so once you've, you've established your credibility, you've built a network of people you know, and, and then you want to start connecting with people who might be, you know, future Rotarians or, or Rotaractors. So how, what sort of um, people would you want to look for? Uh, so the first thing is that most, most Rotary and Rotaract clubs are, you know, working in a defined geographic area. So you can search for keywords, you know, for the place where you are. So um, I originally did um, this presentation at the Williton, Roach Club of Williton. And so I thought, well, who can I find in Williton? Um, so I did a little search and, you know, up pops, um, <clears throat> you know, Dr. Jasmine Day, president of the Ancient Egypt Society of Western Australia. Um, she's a teacher, humanities and social science teacher at Williton Senior High School. So, um, you know, she would be a great person to connect with on, on, for Rotary because, you know, she's a high school teacher and we have lots of programs that are connected to the high school. Um, but she also shows that she has a, a, you know, deep interest in ancient Egypt. So if I was to reach out to her, I would probably think, well, you know, she might make a great guest speaker for the club. You know, we could learn something about ancient Egypt. We could get to meet her and then she would learn about Rotary uh, and then we can build from there. Um, you know, the next person, she's a volunteer with the parents group at Williton Senior High School. Um, uh, you know, so it's likely that she lives in the area. Again, you know, she's a PR consultant, so maybe she could bring some social media skills to the club or, media, uh, you know, media skills. So, again, you know, someone who would be fantastic to connect with. Um, next person is the principal director at Tax Store Williton. So, you know, accounting skill, future treasurer. Um, so you, you can think about, um, you know, the sort of skills that people would bring to the club. Um, you can think about where they're located. Um, but the key is to, um, you know, some of these details will show up in the immediate search, you know, so you can see them straight away. But it's always a good idea to um, click on the person's name, read their full profile so that you really understand who they are, what they're interested in. And then you can take the next step of, of uh, reaching out to them and asking them if they're interested to come and visit your club. Um, <clears throat> one thing to be careful of is that when you're looking at this view, if you click, if you click the connect button here, um, it'll send a default message straight off. Um, so always make sure that you're looking at the person's full profile when you're connecting with them um, so that you don't accidentally send a default message to them. <clears throat> okay. Another way that you can uh, connect with people on LinkedIn is to join groups. Um, so there are a lot of groups uh, on LinkedIn for all sorts of different themes. Um, so here I've used the example of groups that are about, you know, non-profit marketing, non-profit management, um, can connect with people that have similar interests. Um, uh, when you join a group, um, Different groups have different rules, but it's always important to read the group rules and think about, you know, how they like to change things. Um, you know, some groups don't like things that are seen as a bit, you know, self-promoting, so you have to, you know, moderate your behaviour there. Um, but most groups are quite open to people who ask questions, share ideas and make suggestions. So, um, you know, once you get a sense of the group and who's in it and what sort of conversations they're having, um, you can get a lot of value out of a group. 
Um, similarly, you know, if you're an accountant, you might be wanting to join groups that are related to accounting. Um, but, you know, you can ask questions in there that, you know, might uh, over time, you know, help people learn about Rotary as well. Um, so the other way to get noticed on LinkedIn is to actually, um, as, as I was talking in, in the first section, is to write um, articles and post updates and comment and share on other things that other people have written. Um, so this is um, just an example of uh, one of the little blogs that I wrote on LinkedIn, you know, ended up being seen by, you know, 1,300 people. Um, it was a blog about mental health. Um, so. Uh, you know, that, that such, I guess, shows, you know, the power of these sorts of mediums and that they can reach quite a wide audience, um, you know, if, if you write something that's engaging and that, that people, um, you know, uh, are interested in sharing. Um, <clears throat> so that's basically the, the basics of, of what I wanted to share. But now what I want to do is to actually show you some live examples. <laughs> so <laughs> this is um, where things might get a bit tricky. Okay, so uh, have I lost the sharing? No, you should still have it. I haven't, haven't taken it away from you, so that's, you should, yep. you've still got a paper, you, the screen um, does There's a message closed. up the top saying sharing is paused. Okay, I resume share. Yep. Can everyone see the LinkedIn page now? I can't see it yet. It's, it does seem okay. to. No, mm -hmm. Don saying no. Yep, just let me um, fix that. Okay, so. I think. So, do you have the uh, the browser open? Yeah, I have the browser open. So, yep. what I might do is I'll stop share and then I'll share yep. my screen again. Good way to go. Yep, and then share screen, and here we go. All right, can we see it now? Yes, I okay. can see it. Great. Okay. So um, now we're going to go through a couple of live examples and um, uh, I have got a couple of chat things up. So I was just going to, yep, so that's okay. We're all back now. Um, so what we're going to do now is just to show you a couple of things on, on the live screen. So firstly, um, you know, this is my full profile. Um, and this is my articles and activities. <clears throat> so I've written quite a few articles about um, different things to do with Rotary. Um, so this article was about the uh, Play Meet with Purpose that my club held, which is an initiative which is aimed at getting parents with young children involved in Rotary. Um, uh, I've written in the past about Hat Day for Mental Health. Um, also, um, uh, I wrote about our entertainment book orders, but um, this was actually more about the um, the idea of entertainment book as a social enterprise and the fact that it's been around for a long time and, you know, thinking about that model and how they've transformed from a, transformed from a physical book to a digital membership uh, and, and that story of innovation in, in how their, their model, you know, operates um, as a way of also saying, well, actually, you know, maybe you'd want to buy one. <laughs> so, um, you know, basically wanting to, um, uh, you know, encourage uh, a different sort of thought process around, you know, why people would want to be interested in that. Um, uh, you know, I've written about polio, mental health first aid, um, you know, so, so these are examples. Um, one of the articles I wrote um, was actually prompted by realising that a lot of people were ticking the box on their profile saying they were interested in uh, being a not-for-profit director or skilled volunteering. And I actually asked people, well, are you actually acting on that goal? You know, you've ticked a box, what are you doing about it? And suggesting that they, you know, come along and learn about Rotary and how they can get involved there. Um, and this one is about, um, so you think you want to be a social entrepreneur. It's basically the idea that if, you um, uh, you know, a lot of people think that if they've got an idea for changing the world that they need to set up an organisation on their own, whereas actually they can join Rotary and, and achieve a social project within Rotary and get all of the support and the, the network from that. So, um, 
you know, through, um, you know, sharing these sorts of things, um, you know, some of them have been viewed 500 times, 200 times. I mean, obviously, um, you know, the, um, you know, some, some articles do better than others, but, um, <clears throat> you know, I think that it, it is worth it to, um, you know, create those sorts of things. Um, you know, I also share a whole range of posts, you know, some things are related to my work, you know, I obviously write a lot of stuff about UWA and, you know, the achievements of our alumni and re medical research and, um, but also share things about, you know, philanthropy more generally. Um, and, uh, you know, a few days ago, um, you know, I wrote something about how much I enjoy um, our club because our activities are family friendly. You know, I can be a parent, a professional and a volunteer. So, um, although, you know, this sort of photo might be something that would more often be on Facebook, the fact that I've put it in a professional context um, means that, you know, I can share things like this um, on LinkedIn, you know, occasionally. Not all the time, but, you know, every now and then it's, um, it, it, it fits. Um, so what I'd like to do is also go through some live search examples. Mm. Um, so the first one I'm going to do is to look for Rotaract um, because we're coming up to 50 years of, of is it 50 years of Rotaract um, globally? So, you know, that's a really exciting anniversary. Um, and um, hopefully, you know, Rotary um, clubs and Rotaract clubs around the world are going to have a big party. Um, so we need to find all our, you know, previous Rotaractors. Um, <clears throat> so when you search your, your, um, your network is always going to be influenced by your existing network. Um, so you can see more people that are already connected to the people you already know. <clears throat> um, so in this case, I'm searching for Rotaract and I'm going to narrow the location to Perth um, because that's where I'm situated. And also um, uh, because I, you know, don't want to necessarily bother with people I already know, I'm just going to look for my second and third connections. Okay. So that's then narrowed um, people who come up with a search term of Rotaract down to 175 people, which is kind of manageable to, to, to search through. Um, but if I want to narrow it further, I can, I can go down and tick, tick the people that have, you know, interest in skilled volunteering and interest in board service. Because that, um, you know, is going to narrow it down now again. Um, so now it's narrowed it down to 48 people. Um, so that's, you know, a much more manageable list to start with. Um, I can see here, you know, a couple of people that um, have uh, been, had past positions in, in Rotaract quite recently. Um, uh, you know, so I can, I can click on their um, profile and learn a bit more about that. So, you know, if we look at, um, at STAR, um, you know, she's doing Bachelor of Science in Speech Pathology at, at Curtin. Um, and uh, she's a scholarship holder. You know, she was at Interact um, uh, at Ross Moyne. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, if we look at her activities, um, you know, in a bit more detail, we'll be able to, you know, work out her, because um, uh, that's in her experience as well. So I think that's in her past positions. Um, she's got it in her, um, uh, she's also been involved in ISEC. So she was in, she was in Rotaract at Ross Moyne um, for a year, um, and, but then she also moved on to other organisations. So, um, you know, she may not be involved in Rotaract now. So it'd be a good opportunity to reconnect with her, you know, ask her to get back involved, um, you know, find out um, if there was any particular reason why she left, you know, um, and, and, and find a way to, to bring her back into the organisation. Um, another great example um, is um, I was looking at this list a little earlier and I came across Nicole. Um, so he's a technical account manager at Microsoft. Um, he's been in Perth for just almost two years. Um, before that, he was in Adelaide. Before that, um, uh, uh, he was in, in India. Um, he had studied in the US as well. Um, but when he was at university in India, he was a member of the Rotaract Club. So he, I think, is an ideal person to reach out to because, you know, he's only been in Perth a short time. He's probably still building his network. 
you know, he's got some past experience of Rotaract, you know, he's the ideal sort of person that we would want to get involved in Rotary. Um, so I'm actually going to um, try and connect with him right now. And this is where I can customise this invitation. So I'm going to add a note. I'm going to say, hi, Nicole. I noticed you were involved in Rotaract back in India. Um, are you in, in touch with Rotary or Rotaract now? Oops. Rotaract now. Would you like to reconnect? Okay, and then I'm going to go regards Kate. Uh, and I'm just going to put Rotary the Club of Western Australia. Okay, so I'm going to send that invitation now. The important thing is that, you know, if Nicole comes back to me because he may decide to ignore the message, even though I have praised it in a, in a decent way, um, I'm going to find out about what's convenient for him. Um, because I always think that it's important when we're reaching out to people who have been involved with Rotary in the past, that although it would be fabulous if um, that person uh, did join, uh, you know, your own club, um, it's, it's the more important thing is that they, they reconnect with either Rotaract or Rotary. Um, so I'm going to ask him questions about, um, you know, what sort of areas of Perth um, suit so him? Does he prefer to do stuff in person or is he interested in doing stuff online? Um, and, you know, once he gives that feedback, then I'll give him a few suggestions, um, you know, suggest that he tries at least two or three clubs before he decides what the right one for him is. Um, because I think that's the best way in which we can attract people to the organisation if we think about their interests and, and not just our own. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that's an example of um, searching for someone, um, you know, in relation to Rotaract. Um, other, you know, programs you can search for, obviously, RILA, Youth Exchange. Um, it's just a matter of using the keyword and to then, you know, narrow the search until you, you get a manageable group to work with. Um, and then, um, you know, reach out to them um, in a way that's open and, and uh, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll respond. Um, so what I can probably do now is to try a few different searches that um, would come from the audience. So um, if anyone has got a search that they'd like me to try, um, preferably something that is based in either Perth or Sydney, because um, that's where my network is the strongest. Um, so if there's anyone who wants to make a suggestion, you can use the chat box to um, you know, give me an example of something you'd like to search for. Um, so it might be a location, it could be um, someone in a certain profession or industry. Um, you know, we can, we can have a go at, at searching for, for someone. Any ideas? Okay, I've got one come through. Agile software development. Okay, let's have a look for people in agile software development. Okay, so I'm going to look for people in Perth. Okay, and I'm going to, again, narrow my search um, because it's got 3,000 and that's a future many to go through by people who are showing a non-profit interest um, because, you know, I'm wanting to reach out to them about Rotary. So, you know, I want them to at least have thought about doing something in a non-profit context. Um, I'm also going to, again, focus on, you know, second and third connections because, um, um, you know, I've probably already, you know, pestered the people I know about joining Rotary. <laughs> um, and uh, here we go. So, um, I'm going to close that chat thing. 
Okay, so um, you know we've we've we're, we've come up with four hundred and thirty eight results. Um, so we've got Raul, who's an Agile Co Scrum Master in Project Management at um, at IBM. Now, if we have a look at um, Raul's interests, um, you know he's been in Perth for a bit over a year. Before that, he was in Singapore. Before that, India. Um, you know, so it's probably quite likely that he has had some exposure to, to Rotary in India, you know, although he doesn't mention it in his profile, um, you know, it's possible that he might, might have some knowledge of it. Um, uh, you know, he's, he's ticked the box for, you know, being interested in volunteering. Again, because he's only been in Perth a short time, he's a prob probably the type of person who might be open to, to new connections. Um, so again, we could we could connect with him and um, you know send him a to say you know um, you know I'm from a non-profit organisation who's um, you know um, we're, we're in need of you know someone who might be interested in, in volunteering that can do agile software development um, you know would you like to come and visit our our local club or um, you know uh, you know reach out to them in that way um, so the important thing is is to you know uh, make it personal show that you've read their profile and understand who they are and what they might be interested in um, and, and to take it from there. Um, <clears throat> again, um, we can probably do another search. Um, I'm just going to put plus Rotary <laughs> just to see what happens. So I've actually come up with um, nine results of someone who, where it's got Agile software development and Rotary. <laughs> um, so here we've got, um, let's see what Adam has to say. Um, so he's a technology leader with a passion for people development, um, you know, associate engineering manager, solution engineering, payments, Java, um, housing assistant. Um, now we sort of need to figure out where has he mentioned Rotary. So um, he's done some stuff in the Pilbara. So he was a Rala camp facilitator. Um, you know, and he's, he's uh, uh, you know, he did that up to 2016. So it's possible that he's still doing that. Um, so, you know, if I'm looking for someone with software skills that, um, you know, can help me with my um, uh, software development, then Adam's certainly a, a great person to reach out to. Um, and that's also why it's really valuable to um, even use LinkedIn to search for people you already know. So for example, you might have met a Rotarian several times, but not actually realised that they're really skilled in software development, um, you know, because it just hasn't come up in, in conversation. They might be, you know, from a few clubs over. Um, so, you know, LinkedIn is a really useful tool for discovering people you already know, as well as um, people that you haven't met yet. Um, so I think, was there another question or suggestion that had come through? I saw something flashing, but um, okay. Um, so let's try another example. Um, this time I want to search for um, a guest speaker on a particular topic. Um, here's a suggestion here. Okay. Um, so a if I'm looking for a suggestion on a particular topic, um, uh, so um, does anyone have a, a topic that they would like to search for a guest speaker? Um, does anyone have a suggestion there? So some sort of area of expertise that your club would like to learn about. Okay. Well, I'll try one just to start with. Um, so I'm going to Okay, so Leanne Nola has actually suggested that we look for um, lifestyle village bull divers um, and conservation of wildlife. So because um, conservation is probably a, a topic um, that would be good for a guest speaker. Um, I will, uh, I will do that one first.
So I'm going to search for conservation to start with. And um, I'm going to, well, there's one that's come up already, um, but I'm going to, she's in Sydney, um, wildlife conservation speaker, perfect. Um, and she's involved in the orangutan project. Um, so if I was in Sydney and I was looking for a wildlife conservation speaker, you know, she would, she would be the perfect person. Um, okay. But if I want to look for someone in Perth, Okay, um, so Peter McKenzie talks about um, climate, Commissioner of Soil and Land Conservation at the Department of Agriculture. But we're actually looking for wildlife conservation. Just to narrow the search a bit more. Okay, um, so Assistant Director of Science and Conservation uh, Division at West Australian Department of Parks and Wildlife. You know, he, he would be a perfect speaker. Um, so, again, if, if I want to narrow the list of suggestions to people who are interested in skilled volunteering and, and board service, because my, um, uh, you know, my hope in inviting someone to speak at the club might be that they, they might be interested in Rotary themselves, um, you know, that, that sort of narrows the list further. Um, you know, so here we've got a science educator and environmental professional, um, Van Oosten. So again, you know, she would likely be an interesting person to, to invite to meet the club. Um, you can, you know, sometimes you can narrow your choice by, you know, figuring out, you know, whether or not someone is, you know, north of the river or south of the river and, and how close they might be to, um, you know, whether it's going to be convenient for them to, to come to your club. Um, so, you know, there's different decision criteria there. Um, so, that's, that's a good example of looking for a speaker. The other example that I was going to show, you know, just as a comparison, um, is looking for people with expertise in malaria, um, you know, because that's the topic that, um, you know, your club might be interested in learning about. Um, again, I've narrowed it to um, people in Perth. Um, if, skilled volunteering, um, you know, so there's there's a few, um, you know, different examples of, you know, people that you could reach out to, um, you know, to invite them to, to speak at your club on the topic of malaria. Um, so that, that's a really useful tool, um, you know, when you're looking for information. Um, so let's just have a look at other suggestions that come through. Okay. So um, now that we've gone through a few examples, um, I think we'll move on to general questions. Um, and Leanne has asked the first question, which is, um, what happens if you accidentally hit connect and send a default message? Um, you know, can you send a proper one? Um, so when you send a message, um, it, it ends up in your messages box. Um, so I'm just going to close the, the question box for a second. Um, it ends up in your messages box or there's actually um, uh, in your network box as well. Um, so when you go, when you click on my network, it comes up with your invitations and um, then you can manage all and it shows you received, um, uh, received invitations and also your sent invitations. Hi Don. <laughs> um, so when you have, when you can see your sent invitations, you can actually go to your sent invitations and withdraw, um, and then go back and, and resend. Um, so that's really useful to know that you know if you do accidentally send a message, that you can go to your network, go to manage all, go to sent, and then you can withdraw the message that you've just sent, and, and then you know look for their profile again. Make sure you're seeing their full profile, and then when you click connect here, it'll give you the option of personalising. Um, uh, so, does anyone have any other questions about what we've been talking about? There is one other question, Kate. Um, yeah. LinkedIn has an, has different levels of membership. Uh, there's a basic free level and uh, uh, and, and paid levels. Uh, what do you recommend um, relative to free versus paid? For most people, the, the free version will be adequate. 
Um, I have a paid version because I also use it a lot for my work, um, even though I, I pay for it myself. I just find it really um, handy. Um, but the main thing that the, um, uh, so the other search term that we were looking for was um, bar style. This was another thing that Leanne suggested that we search for. Um, lifestyle, storage, style divers. Okay. Um, so lifestyle village. Um, just the the main thing that higher versions offer you is more options for your search. Um, so um, here I can look for, for example, people that went to the same university as me. Um, you know, I can look for the non-profit interests. I can look for industry. Um, but um, when you upgrade the version, you can search for things like seniority. So you can search for people that are, you know, at a certain level of their company. You can search for company size, um, which um, is not necessarily about searching for big companies. Sometimes you might want to search for small businesses because, you know, a lot of small business owners um, become Rotarians. So, so um, you know, it gives you other search options um, for, for how you can narrow your search. Um, so it just depends on you know, how useful you think those are. Um, the other thing that a premium version gives you is that it does give you the, um, the ability to send a longer introduction message, which um, is um, uh, called an email, um, which is you know, basically just a way of sending an email to a person that you don't know through LinkedIn. Um, those can be handy, but um, I do find that if you use the, the simple connection in the right way, that mostly that, that's enough. Um, but you might want to go back and um, uh, um, you know, use that if, if you're not finding success with the other means. Um, uh, or, or, there's a few other you know, benefits that the premium level offers, but um, the best thing to do is to um, you know, read the information that LinkedIn provides about you know, what the options are figure out if it's worth your budget, um, but make sure you get used to the free version first um, and then think about if you want to upgrade. Thanks, Kate. Um, that's an excellent presentation there. Do we have any, uh, any more questions from the audience? Okay. Look, it looks like uh, you've, you've satisfied your audience's uh, requirements there quite, quite well, Kate. So thank you for doing that. Um, yeah. Uh, here's something. Maybe. Something. Great yeah. job from, from, from Julie Aubrey. Oh. Great to have you. Julie. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'll just have a look in the Q&A and see if anything else. Yeah, so. Yeah, excellent. Okay. Um, just so that I know a bit about the audience, um, uh, would everyone sort of mind um, sharing where they joined the webinar from? Uh, which Rotary Club or if you can type that into the box, the chat box or the Q&A box. Be interesting to know. Okay, so we've got... Um, James from Elizabeth Key, Julie from Everston. Oh, hi, Julie. <laughs> um, so we've got um, Mark from Bunbury. That's great. Okay, who else have we got here? Um, so Leanne from Baldivis, Satellite so Palm Beach. That's great. Yes, got a few different people. And Don from Richie Cobb of Southwest USA. That's great. Wow, what time what time of night is it in the US? <laughs> or morning? Is it morning there? <laughs> Hopefully you guys aren't losing sleep. 7.15 in the morning. Right. Well, it's it's Very useful to know that this time of night we can connect with the US and not be too unsociable an hour. <laughs> it's, it's probably a good time to try again. Oh, 5.15 in Phoenix, okay. <laughs> yeah. 
we, so, we um, usually get the unsociable times for, for most of the Australian women are, other than the ones that we originate from Perth. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's an advantage being in Perth. Yeah. No, that's great. Um, the other thing that might help in terms of, um, you know, searching for, um, you know, focusing the search for your location. So, for example, um, you know, if I did search for, you know, Evanston as an example, um, so my network there is not huge, so it might not necessarily, um, you know, come up. Um, you can actually um, use this keyword section to narrow, um, you know, if, if you type it into the general search box, it'll pick up a keyword anywhere in your profile. But if I want to search for companies that mention Evanston, Evanston, um, that will give me a bit more focus search because when I'm looking for a suburb or, or a place as a keyword, um, usually that keyword is more useful if it's mentioned in the company name because you're basically looking for, you know, the Everston florist shop or the Everston plumbing business, you know, um, because, you know, they're, they're like people that are likely to be in Rotary. So in this case, I found someone at a local high school, um, uh, you know, professional um, portrait. Um, he's a maths teacher, but, you know, he also enjoys photography. So, you know, that could be someone who would be great to have in your club because, um, uh, you know, they have a hobby. Um, they're also, you know, in a, in a high school. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, we found someone from the Rochi Club of Everston. Um, you know, so, um, you know, director of the Everston Community Foundation, um, you know, she's probably a busy lady, might not necessarily be able to, you know, join Rotary herself with their current commitments, but also a great um, community partner. So, you know, definitely someone that you would get to not want to get to know. Um, so, you know, there's, there's all sorts of ways in which you can use the search function, um, you know, to find people, learn about their interests, uh, connect with them. Um, but it's all about, you know, being uh, mindful about, you know, why you're going to connect with someone, what you can offer them, thinking about their interests, thinking about what's convenient for them, and then, um, you know, hopefully they will respond to that and um, be part of our wonderful community. There we go. It does seem that we've exhausted the potential for questions there, Kate. Yeah. Great work tonight. Thank you for doing that. And from, from the feedback we've got from the audience, you've certainly met their needs and done a marvellous job. So uh, great work, Kate, and thank you. So a round of applause from the audience, please. Kate won't be able to hear it, but hey. <laughs> great work, thank you. Kate. Well done. Thank you. Great. And if I could just get a little plug for some webinars that we have coming down the pipe. Next Sunday week, we'll be offering a webinar on the YAS recruitment process, one that's been used with remarkable effect in a number of places in Australia. We have Judy Ford joining us to give us an update on that. So that's, not, that's one not to be missed. And the other one that we have a definite time for is is on Thursday, the 22nd of June, same time of night as Kate's webinar started. And that will be by our district PR director, John Stockbridge, talking about his method of connecting with and communicating with business networking groups that has seen a number of folk come to Rotary meetings and join Rotary. So two webinars coming up. We have a number of others in the pipeline, including James McLeod on the the creation of a new club and the things you need to do to to refresh your club and we're also lining up one of our Rotary representatives to talk about connecting Rotary actors with Rotary so a bit in the pipeline there and the other one of course is we have our major Network 18 membership seminar on the 6th of August that will be a networked event we're going to have a core seminar in Perth a webcasting to a number of regional, small regional seminars so that we pick up everyone in the district with a, a full menu of membership and club development things bright and early in the new Rotary year on the 6th of August. So we have plenty of time to work together to implement those things. So a bit to look forward to. So just before I say goodnight, thanks again to Kate. Thanks again to our audience, our international audience for joining us tonight and our local audience too. It's great to have you with us and 
Until next time, it's good night.